Floyd, it's only the second time you've ever granted a rematch. Why does Mark Pacino Maidana deserve a rematch? Um, my job is just to be whoever they put on my company. You know, I'm not the matchmaker. I'm, I'm the fighter slash promoter. Uh, my team brought the fight to me, and I said, let's make it happen. What were some of the other options that you were looking into for this fight? Because ultimately, nobody controls their destiny in the ring more than Floyd Mayweather. Um, I can't. You know, I don't really know, you know, what was the other names, you know. That's not my focus, you know. My job is to, you know, when they bring a guy to the table, if it's, if it's the right fight, let's make it happen. You talk about focus. Were you at 100% mentally, physically for your last fight? Um, you have to be able to win through it all. And was I 100% mentally and physically? Absolutely. I was great. He was just a guy that was extremely wild, um, extremely dirty. But uh, like I said before, I will always find a way to win. Last time you gave a minor rematch, the second time was so much easier. You've got something in your DNA that allows you to make adjustments in the ring during, prior to a fight. What can we expect this time around against Maidana? Um, I don't think I really have to make any changes. I think I didn't lose, and I know I won easy. I think, like I said in, um, in my past interviews, everyone is used to seeing me win 12 rounds, 11 rounds, or making a guy quit, or knocking a guy out. You know, it's been, it's been a long time. It's been a very, very long time. People have seen a guy come out and fight so rugged and tough for the first three rounds. You were cut. You had to go through a lot this time around. Um, what did you learn about yourself in that fight? Um, I was cut before. I mean, which, you know, the commentator said Floyd has never been cut before. I mean, adversity. That's what defines a champion. That's what defines a legend. Everything wrapped in one. And um, I was able to make adjustments, and I came out victorious. What is yoga giving to you now that you're doing that in addition to all your body? Oh, uh, man, uh, yoga, was, yoga was, was great. You know, um, I'm stretching. I'm feeling a lot better. The combinations is flowing a lot better, and I'm, I'm throwing a lot more punches. You're still undefeated. What's this fight all about? Um, you know, this is the guy that's in the way of... Uh, of a great legacy that I can have. And, um, and I look at winning as giving up, giving it 100%. And I will go out there and give it 100% each and every time. The Manny Pacquiao was on our show yesterday, said it's a shame that the man who calls himself the best pound for pound is avoiding me. Bob Aram says he believes this can happen. Can it happen, or are the fans just delusional to keep believing that Mayweather and Pacquiao can meet in the ring? Well, as of right now, I can't say what the future holds for Floyd Mayweather. I can't overlook Maidon, you know, and I think that that's what happened in the Marquez uh, Manny fight. Manny was too focused on Floyd Mayweather instead of focusing on the guy that was in front of him. So as of right now, Manny Pacquiao is not my focus. Thank you. Last time to prepare in the first fight, he feels he had more this time, but you also have had more time to prepare. Has that been beneficial to you? Um, I mean, really all I need is all, really all I need is six weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, I think any real champion, one thing you need is six weeks, a month and a half. But um, I think our training camp, you know, by about time the fight comes, it has been probably eight weeks and uh, yeah. we had we had a tremendous training camp. Everything has flowed smooth, very, very comfortable. My uncle and my father is the chemistry, they're working good. together good. So, you know, everything is playing out like it should play out. Now, you've been fighting so much more regularly now, and I'm curious to know, at this point in your, your life, you're in your mid to late 30s, has yes. it taken any toll on your body by fighting more often and training more often? I'm actually feeling a lot better. Is it because you're fighting more often? I mean, this fight, I mean, just this training camp, period. I'm feeling a lot better, you know, stronger. I'm juicing, as far as, you know, natural juices. Yes. You know, uh, <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> yes, uh, as, far as, as, far as, as far as natural juices with my, with my chef. Yeah. Uh, I mean, vegetables, 
you know, a lot more organic food. And um, like I said before, I feel, I feel, I feel extremely great this game. With the finally, was there anything in that last fight beyond the, the tactics that you find objectionable for him? Was there anything he did that you do feel like you want to think about or adjust to at all? I know you're saying you won the fight, but was there anything that he did that, that you want to think about maybe changing? Um, I don't really have to, you know, change up, you know. You know, like I said before, I only can get a guy three rounds, mm -hmm. you know, out of 12. I only can get him three rounds. So there's nothing I can really change, but I guess win all 12 rounds and knock the guy out. That's what it, you know. That's what the fans really want to see. Okay, and finally, uh, you did face adversity of, uh, among other things, and caught and, and the rough tactics yes. and all the rest. But I did in the past. You know, yeah. I, was, I was faced with a hit, but uh, yeah. more than just once, probably right. three other times in my career. You know, um, but you know, things happen in the sport of boxing, right. and you know, a true champion can make adjustments. My, my boxing training camp. And, um, you know, uh, we communicate, we talk, we don't know what the future holds for us as of right now. And um, he went with me when I went to go, uh, when I went to go do my ball work, when I, when I went to go jog six and a half, seven miles. And he actually, and, he, and, he, and Alex Arisa came to my training camp and watched me train. And he said, well, I thought, by watching all actions and you know hearing things by word of mouth, I didn't really know you worked that hard. He said after seeing you, you work harder than any fighter I've ever seen. Do you hear that from everybody that comes to you? I know Warren Buffett was here. A lot of people come to you. Do they all kind of have the same sentiment? Oh, uh, Warren Buffett. I mean, like I said before, I mean, the creator of the Money Team, <laughs> the originator of the, of the Money Team. <laughs> I mean, he's a great guy. So cool. And like, you know, guys like Warren Buffett. Those are the guys that I take my head off to. Those are the guys that I look up to. Those are the guys, when I was young, I said, that's what I want to do. I wanted to ask you, you know, and, and I don't mean this to be unfair to go off on a different topic, but you know, when, when the protests were going on, and they're still going on in Ferguson, you know, you're a like prominent odds, African right? American man, you know, I'm sure you lived a lot of the problems that a lot of the people that are protesting. But, uh, have you thought about speaking out about your experiences and and about the injustice that you faced uh, in your life to try to help the people that are living in the kind of conditions that they are in, you know, not only in Ferguson, but around the country. I mean, only thing we can do, we're stronger together than apart. You know, I think that we need to start working together. I mean, just people in general. You know, I don't, I mean, it's a bad, it was a very, very bad situation with the first thing, you know? And so, I like to sit down and communicate and talk with my kids on a regular, on a regular basis about being fair, uh, etiquette, honesty. Because, you know, and like I said before, it, it's, it's a very, very bad situation. And I was thinking about something, you know? You know, when you just ask me something about, you know, uh, 50 cents. If you really want to donate money, donate money to the, uh, you know, Mike Brown family. You know, uh, you know, I shouldn't stop you. You know, because I've been donating. We've been, you know, us, our company, me and Leonard, we've been donating hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to different organizations for years without any. Like I said, without the media, you know, without getting any credit for it. And um, uh, the Blitzville, what, what was that for? Building homes for the less fortunate. The homeless. Uh huh? The homeless. Yeah, we, we, the kids, like, the we, we give back to the make different a wish. schools, make a wish. Name it. Uh, better you, women. You know, better women. That's what, that's what we do. I, that's what we love to do. So I think the best thing, you know, 50 cent to do, and I, like I said before, it's no hard feelings. The best thing for him to do is give the $750,000 to Mike Brown family. What is, you referenced your, your kids, and uh, you know, I grew up in the 60s when that's when, you know, the, the segregation was really yes. still there, and they were trying to get the civil rights bill and everything. Yeah. So people worried about sending their kids out into the world then. Now we're in the 2000s, and you 
worry about your children going into the world even today, 40 years after the Civil Rights Bill was passed? Um, 50, you might be saying 50. You know, I just happen to be fortunate enough to be on my own at 16 and survive everything. You know, you know, um, my life was a roller coaster ride. But I'm here and I'm happy. But I, I can't see my kids going out there in the real world, not even at 18. And you know, my son's not that far from 18. Um, I think my, my children leave the home. They have to at least be 2021. 20, Last question for you. Um, you know, Mayweather Promotions has been around for a while. This is your first pay-per-view that you're the lead promoter on officially yes. of, of record. Uh, so does that make it more difficult for you? I know that you have a good team that you're working with, but obviously, you know, now this is your show, top to bottom. Does that put a little more pressure on on you to, you know, to? <laughs> well, you know, I really, I just really want to say that, you know, I commend and take my hat off to Richard Schaefer, um, a great guy. I mean, he done it. I mean, Richard Schaefer to to go to board. You know, Golden Boy Promotions took the company from the ground um, to where it's at right now. He's done a, a great job with that company. And um, still a very, very good friend of mine. And um, we, we can't say what the future holds for for me and Richard, but he's still a great guy. He will re he, he will remain my friend. Me and Leonard is, is working hand in hand each and every day. Well, Leonard is doing all the grunt, all the day-to-day the -day work for Mayweather Promotions. Him and, him, and the, him and the team, him and the staff, and uh, it's taking a lot of pressure off me so I can focus on my fight. Do you have any decision-making power? Do you have any role, like tangible role, in the, in the promoting of the fight other than every, doing what you're doing? Every he decision. All. Every decision. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's something, of what? course. I mean, I think, I think we work together as a team. I think, I don't want to just say that. We work, to, we work together as a team, and I, I truly believe in, you know, I strive to be a perfectionist. So, I'm on my team extremely tough every day because we only want great results. You know, you noted that you feel a lot stronger in this camp. What do you attribute that to it and what are you doing differently? Okay. It's just, um, I think probably a lot more rest, uh, eating a lot better as I get older. Um, I learn my body. Well, I'm learning, I'm learning a lot more about my body as I get older. But whereas, you know, you got fighters that train, you know, every day without letting the body rest. For the body to be able to go out there and perform like the body should perform, the body must rest. So, um, you know, I feel good. Actually, yesterday at 4 in the morning, we boxed. We boxed 14 rounds. And so, you know, like I said before, I feel good. And training camp has went tremendous. I know you incorporated yoga into your routine. Is that what you're mentioning as well? Getting to know your body and seeing the benefits of that? I think the body should, I think, you know, me stretching. I'm throwing a lot more combinations. And, you know, that's something that we've been working on in training camp. And, um, you know, with, with, with due time, you know, only thing we can do is get better. You know, as we get older, uh, we can, no, we can no longer grow physical, but we can grow mentally. So, you know, we want to get better, me and my team. Well, you talking have about training camp, when most other fighters go out to training camp, they have to leave home, leave their family behind. You're unlike them, you're able to stick with your family, you go to events. What is it about yourself that makes it that much different that you can come and focus and not have to have those types of training camps? I, I'm just, I think I'm just blessed. Okay. You know, I'm just blessed, but I think I have to work that much harder. And um, it motivates me, you know. It, well, you know, when I see my my daughter, when I see my family come to support me every day, it motivates me to want to work harder, to want to give them the world. And uh, Madonna, the first fight you called it a MMA fight. Are you expecting the same type of fight from him? Is there any kind of style differently that you can do? To have the fight not go that type of route? I can't really say how this fight will play out, but um, I'm going to go out there and be at my best, uh, work hard, and be smart. Hey, Floyd, when you uh, when you exchange with Maidana and Miguel Cotto, 
everyone said maybe or some fans said you were losing your feet but then when you when you move around they say you're running is that just a simple case of the fans well, being contradicting themselves well like i said before i love the fans but the fans don't the fans are i mean i mean the fans like i said before the fans are are like i said are, are, are biased critics also but um i appreciate the fans and everybody's entitled to their own opinion i mean if it's running, if I ran my way to 46 victories, then you know what? I think a lot of boxers need, need to learn my ingredients. You know, Floyd, you have done so much in this sport in the ring that nobody really uh, doesn't understand that to some degree. But what you've done outside the ring in business is very unique. Being the highest paid athlete in sports, what did you learn about the boxing game that Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, Mike Tyson hadn't realized? Um, I take my head off to all those guys you just named that paved the way for me to be where I'm at today. You know, I can't really speak for them, but um, I had a tremendous team, you know, and we had a game plan. That's why I'm where I'm at today. When you talk about your team, you brought in Alex Ariza to camp, and that surprised a lot of people. What's the relationship with Alex, and what do you think he brings to your camp? Um, Alex came and watched me train a couple of times. Um, he watched me run a couple times. I think he came to see, is it really true that I work that hard? Is it really true that I'm dedicated to my craft like that? And um, I was going out for a seven mile run, a six and a half or a seven mile run. I don't know exactly. And Alex Ariza was just showing me different stretches, you know, that I can use that's going to help to make everything more comfortable. So, you know, um, I don't have anything negative to say about Alex Ariza. I probably said something about him in the past, and he probably has have said something about me in, in the past. You know, like I said before, I'm only human. I can contradict myself. And um, I don't have anything negative to say about Alex Ariza. I mean, I mean he's not 100% uh, uh, with our camp, but if he want to come here and work with fighters, and like I said before, our doors open to everyone. Our doors open to everyone. And lastly, someone who's contradicted themselves a little bit in the press is your friend 50 Cent who's been after you, you know, on Twitter, on uh -huh. Instagram. He's been talking so much negativity about you, but then yes. when I ask him, he says that you're brothers and it's <laughs> just a joke. And you're, are you in on the joke? Do you find that funny? I don't really know what joke. My job is to just focus on my boxing. I mean, um, I mean, last time I checked, I thought he was a boxing promoter. I and mean, just hopefully, you know, I, don't, I want to see him sell records, you know. You know, um, I think he had an album. I don't know when the last time 50 Cent has had an album, but, you know, good luck with everything. Lloyd, do you have an update on the gloves? I mean, uh, we've seen it on, on All Access. Madonna said it himself. He's not worried about the gloves. So I guess it's Robert Garcia that's complaining about the gloves. If the fighter is not complaining about the gloves, the trainer shouldn't be complaining that Train, the trainer shouldn't be complaining about the gloves because the trainer don't have to fight. And if, and if you feel that he won the last fight with the gloves that he had on, why not get the same gloves again? Now they say that those gloves are used by a lot of fighters that are uh, by the commission approved and that they mentioned that Cotto used those gloves when he fought against you. What's your response to their camp's claims? I'll let Leonard answer that. Bottom line, they're wearing the power lock gloves. We have an, we have an agreement, that's it. In the, in the discussion, it's nothing else to talk about gloves. He's wearing the power lock, Everlast gloves. That's it. In the discussion. And just saying, it was the first glove I that mean, started I, up I, everything. I, right? I'm, I'm just, I'm it. just saying. Why is this guy so adamant about wearing these gloves? <laughs> why is this guy so adamant about wearing these gloves? I mean, it's obvious he's trying to pull an Antonio Margarito type move. Like I said before. If you if you can win, do it on an even playing field. Beat me the honest, earn it the hard way. Well, Mayweather, who's the hardest puncher you faced in your entire professional career? I'll tell you that when my career is over. Okay. Come back and ask me that when my career is over. Like, how, how much do you think you'll be missing the sport? I mean, considering you draw so much attention from the matches, how much do <laughs> you think you'll be missing the guys? Do you think they'll appreciate you more when you're done? Um, I can't really say, you know, but um, you know, I love the sport of boxing. And um, Jaylion Love the other day, you know, it was a minor setback for a major comeback. I love Jaylion Love. You know, he's my little brother. 
and um, I'm loyal. I, if I'm with you, I'm with you through your good times and your bad times. I'm a true friend. Floyd, you're going to be defending both of your titles, 147, 154, all in one name. What does it mean to you to be doing that? I don't think I'm defending my, tit my, two, tit my two titles at 154. Yes, yeah. we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> I thought I was. It's just, not a surprise. I thought it's I was just. We talked about it. Wait, wait, I thought I was just defending my two titles at one. That would too. That would too. I got the BC at. I got the WBC at 147 and 154. I got the WBA at 154 and. Yeah, you got them all. I mean, so, and it's never been done. I, I got them all. <laughs> hey, boy, can you can you elaborate on what you said in response to 50 with the Michael Brown situation when he offered you the 750,000 challenge or whatever it was? I mean, everybody know that Floyd Mayweather is A-OK, -okay, very intelligent and very educated, not just in the ring, but outside the ring. And um, if I got paid, if, if, if if, if he offered, I think it was something like, people was telling me, he, he said something about 750000 If you're going to do a, a good deed, don't do it based on me. We're not friends. Do it because that's something that you want to do. You should have been donating money to different, to, to, to different foundations anyway. I've been do donating millions and millions of dollars to, to the American citizens for years. So I think the best thing, for him to do is take the 750000 and give it to Mike Brown family. I think that's a great deed. Um, it's been so long ago, Smitty, I can't really remember that fight. But uh, we were sharp, smart, and very intelligent. And we came out on top. Did you watch the tape of this fight with my daughter? Um, actually, you know, I went on just to see, just to watch the fight to see if the fight was really that close because when I was inside the ring, I didn't feel the fight was that close. And when I got home, I was right. You know, the guy won three of 12 rounds. I had it 117, 111. You clearly took over the fight. How do you make this fight more about round 13 rather than round one again? Um, be first, be smart, and um, uh, try to dominate from the beginning to the end. You know, you've been doing this 18 damn years as a pro, 30 years overall. How do you, and you work out so hard, I, I've seen you working out for so many years, how do you maintain, is your body now, do you know when to rest? Um, well, you know, it's a little different from 10, 12 years ago. I'm older, more mature. If, my, if I know I'm not going to come to the boxing gym and give it 100%, you know, I'd rather not come. I'd rather stay home and rest, and then when I'm going to give it 100%, come back the next day and do what I'm supposed to do. Hey, your regiment of, of t just two things, sparring and road work, has that changed throughout the years? Um, well, yesterday I boxed uh, 14 rounds. I boxed 14 rounds. And, um, you know, I've been running between five and seven miles. I'm in tremendous shape, you know, I feel good. And I'm ready to go out there and entertain. September the 13th on Showtime from the Mayweather Grand Garden Arena. What's going to happen? <laughs> um, if I tell you what it, what's going to happen, then the fans is not going to want to buy the fight. So <laughs> just tune in, you know, buy pay-per-view. Um, I'm very, very thankful for all the fans that have bought my fights in the past. Uh, this is a fight that you can't miss. You want, me to, you want me to give you your ticket how to get out of this fight? A quick left hook to his body. Left hook to the body. Well, we don't. I mean, like I said before, you know, guys push themselves to the limit when they're trying to go for a Mayweather. They're doing everything they can, that they can do to beat me. You know, tackling, kneeing, headbutts. But um, I'll be focused and I'll be there September 13th. And you'll